So tonight's class is a little bit different to regular classes. There's no teaching. I've got no lecture prepared. I is, uh, posted on the course website this evening as a chance for you to ask questions on the course project. It's more of a tutorial-like session. Um, it's more where if you have a question, you ask it publicly. I'll answer it publicly so we all benefit from each other's questions and answers. So, go ahead. Right, so you've got this is your single class for you to get your questions answered for the tutorial and then this is the end for you to get to get your questions answered for us to share information with us. What's the gas viscosity? Anyone got a gas viscosity? How do you calculate your gas viscosity? Okay, so one suggestion is to use multi fractions multiplied by the individual gas viscosity and then put in the weighted sum. Where did you find the individual gas viscosity? I'm just here to, so we all share each other's information. Any other approaches someone might suggest for gas viscosity? Okay, so then the point is being raised that if you've got the gas viscosity there, as you go through the reactor, the, the relative mole fractions are changing, so you need to implement that as a function the, the reactor. Not as conversion. There's no conversion in the system, yeah. but as a function of the mole fractions. Has anyone computed viscosity at low temperature, high temperature, low pressure, high pressure? First, does viscosity vary with pressure? Does it vary with temperature? More so than pressure. Uh, but anyway, so we're looking at our lower bound of temperatures, 300, our upper bound is 400. Any substantial difference then in viscosity between the bounds? Okay, so these are just thoughts to look at. So stiff systems come about when 
as you're simulating a process, there's a, an abrupt change. If you're simulating a process that caused heat to be released, heat's being released and entering the system, and let's say that that heat accumulated suddenly causes a phase change and you start to get the vapor phase forming, you might get something like this happening in reality. So when the, when the, what the integrator is doing is it's integrating, and then when it gets here, it's trying to integrate and, and step ahead. But then when it does the function check, it appears it sees a large error. So then it takes a smaller step size and it decreases that step size multiple times until it gets to a point where the step size is in the order of the computer's precision. So machine precision, EPS. And you can't integrate it. And then it throws up its hands and you see all sorts of error messages on the screen. That's using ODE 4 pilot. If you use ODE 2 3 s it takes those, those uh, breakpoints into account and will, will handle them so that this one's more Slip systems often happen when we get discontinuities or very sudden changes in our profiles of So you may find that under certain settings of temperature and pressure in your, in your integrator, you need to switch, over, switch out to ODE 2 3 s if any of you were using Python, the Python ODE integrator actually has some clever algorithms in it to automatically detect stiffness and switch without you knowing it. But um, that bad, because we have to tell it which integrator to use ahead of time and we need to then switch to ODE. Is it wrong to integrate a non-stiff system with a stiff integrator? It's just usually inefficient. Um, and one good rule of thumb is once you settle on one of your integration, uh, once you settle on the temperature and pressure condition, the good rule is to switch out and try different integrators. So try ODE23S, 4.5, some of the others there in MATLAB, and compare how the accuracy uh, is between the different integrators. So they should agree for the most part. With their minor, minor error. Am I expecting a big pressure drop? I don't know. I, I don't know what to expect. Yeah, how many tubes you've used? What's your viscosity? Okay. Yeah, so what's the viscosity of the tube? Yeah, so the question is, is there a limit to the pressure drop? So far, they have different tubes. Different number of tubes, so different flows through the tube, but you're getting the same pressure drop. So, does that make sense? If you're using different number of tubes, so let's say 100 tubes versus 200 tubes, that you get the same pressure drop. So, so there's an issue there in your model file, and it's good that you picked that up. And that is actually something you should be checking. Right? Check some of these details. If you have the number of tubes, do you expect the profile to appear? Uh, so there's a bug there in the code that's not accountable for the number of tubes. Maybe just one of the variables you haven't divided by the tubes. One tube, yeah, one tube, and then so you take your total flow and divide by all the number of tubes. So we looked at those photos of the heat exchangers last class for a good reason, to show that the face plate is a flat plate, the flow comes in and it's only spread out of all those tubes. So take your total flow again, moles per second divided by the number of tubes, and that's the molar flow with the number of tubes. That will also set the velocity of the tube, which then Right. So heat transfer in this in this example in this course project is a little bit simplified. The heat transfer says that we've got u times a times t minus t a. What's t a? T a. So this is a emphasize that this is a subscript. So again, this quote was unfortunate notation. Make that A and B just to emphasize that ambient. So T ambient 
is constant in this course project. That's not realistic. Okay, so there's an immediate <coughs> a simplifying assumption there for it. Depending on how much time we have next week, we will actually look at how to simulate ambient temperature more appropriately. For most heat exchangers, we have our tube running here, and then we have counter current or co current we have for ambient temperature. So I'll have here's T ambient, and here's my tube is T. I could have my flow going this way for the material in the tube and my flow counter current the ambulance on the shell side. Or I could have co-current flow that way. And T ambient then is also changing. Then you need another OD T ambient to down. Okay. But I've simplified the course project that way and we're only considering a, a constant ambient temperature. Anyone, what, what ambient temperature would be reasonable in this case? Sorry? 25 Celsius? 100 Celsius? Any other? 100 Celsius because? Uh, the reactor is cooled by boiling water. Okay. 25 degrees, you're assuming 25 because maybe you could consider 25 degrees because you're flowing your water so rapidly that it's not really boiling. So it's, it's, you can assume that you're heating water at 15 degrees and it comes out at, at 35, so the average is 25 mixed up. Right, so I guess in your case, you're considering a constant temperature in there that you're creating steam right at the boiling point. Somewhere around the Okay, so those are some suggestions so far. What temperature, so if we're running at 330 Kelvin, what's that in Celsius? Fifty-seven Celsius. So if we were running water outside the, on the shell side at 100 degrees, we'd be transferring heat into the system. If you're running on 330 So just, just pay attention to that. If you're running at 400, then we'd be running above 100 C. And then the heat would be transferred the other way. Anyone got CTO? Let's share some data, let's share some numbers. CTO, CA. So when you got your computer out, let's just do this at 350. Roughly at the midpoint. And let's do that 50 atmospheres. simulations out there, let's, let's just take a look. The main reason why I want to do this is I want you to make sure that your MATLAB code, at least for these basic coefficients, are correct. There's no sense if your MATLAB code is wrong right at the beginning and everything else is a mess on. Let's at least get the basics agreeing with each other. Okay, so we 
name this? Is it, is it an intensive property or is it an extensive property? for the first reaction, I should say, at standard conditions.
And so the project report will require you to hand in your MATLAB code. I'm going to ask for that electronically. I'm going to run it and I'm going to verify the simulations. Those, both, uh, those heats of reaction? Not the first one? No, it's the first one. Agree with the first one, not the second? 
Second one's for the second reaction, yes, yeah, not for the reverse. For the reverse reaction, you just put the sign.
Yeah. Okay. So we've got about three people confirming CT0, CA0, K1, and P0. So let's let's come back to the Ergen equation, G, the mass flow rate. Any strategies that help pay on G? Or I should say mass flux. G is the units of kilograms per second.
Can we account for the change in volume of the gas? Do we need to account to refer to the delta and epsilon? We saw so we don't need to take delta and epsilon into account. Delta and epsilon, remember, were only required when we were dealing with a single equation, a single reaction, I should say. So then we derived that the flow divided by the total flow was 1 plus delta times m, sorry, 1 plus epsilon times epsilon. If you're dealing with multiple reaction systems, multiple reaction systems require to specify Cj as Ct0 multiplied by Fj over Ft multiplied by Y multiplied by T multiplied by T. That takes the, the pressure changes of the change. Thank you. 